Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're gonna do the quick Crochet Stripes Baby Blanket. Really cute. It's actually not very big. It's only 30 inches by 37. We're going to be using a size 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today. It's recommending Baby, uh, sorry, Red Heart Baby Okano. Now I'm not sure that's still available on the market. So I am switching today just on camera with Red Heart with Love. You could also use Red Heart Super Saver, Bernat Super Value. You can have a lot of fun with this particular one. So I actually thought this was a mile a minute blanket. It's not. It's just stripes and it's strategic and we're gonna begin right now. To begin today you're going to chain 113. But I we're going to go second chain from the hook and you wanna get the back uh, uh, ridge of that. So I usually call it the back hump. It's called back ridge. So just turn it over. So second chain. So one, two and get the back hump of the chain and single crochet yourself all the way across the chain. So please do that and then meet me back here in just a moment. Once you go all the way across you're gonna turn your work and let's begin rows number um, two and three. So two and three are both the same. So watch what we're going to do. So you're gonna chain up three which will count as a double crochet and in the very next stitch you wanna apply a double crochet. So whenever you have to repeat this row it's double crochet in the next. Now the next double crochet is around this post that we just made. So wrap the hook and go around the post just made and double crochet as normal. This creates the gapping space that you see within that blanket. Skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. Then the next one is double crocheting around that same post. Okay, so skip the next stitch, double crochet into the next and then double crochet around the post just made. And you're gonna do this all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row in just a moment. So coming up to the end of the row I am just doing my sequence as normal and you will double crochet in the final stitch that is left. So just double crochet in the final. So turn your work and let's begin row number three and row number three is exactly what we just did. So we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three and you're gonna double crochet in the first stitch and then go around the post for the second. So just wrap around the post just made you're going to skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next. Then go around the post. Skipping the next stitch and continue that all the way across and this is row number three. When you get back to the other side after you just did the last one you're going to double crochet in the turning chain. So what I would do if I were you just keep an eye and make sure that these kind of match each other as they're going up and over and it gives you an indication of if you're doing it right. Row number four. Row number four same color. I'm just ch gonna chain one and then just single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So this will be the end of this color and we'll be changing once we get to the other side. So I'll see you at the end of this row. Go into the turning chain when you use the last stitch and then we're gonna finish that color. So we're just gonna chain out, change out this color. I would recommend to you is that you are going to just fasten off and just use a tapestry needle to weave that in. It's really the securest way to do it especially if you're doing this for a charity project or, or anybody really. It's a great way to do it. So go in. Don't change the structure. So when you pull just pull taut but don't change the look and go a second time and a third time and I would do this each time you had to weave in the ends for this project. Then trim, turn your project and then let's begin to do the next section. So this is actually just one of the stripes. With the new color that we wanna start just put it onto the hook already. So slip knot and onto the hook. Go into the back loop. We're only gonna do the back loops on the first one going out. So whenever we switch to another new color just do the back loop and just scoop the yarn and pull through. Don't pull through everything though. Just keep the original loop on the hook and then pull through the two and then that is a standing single crochet in the back loop. In the next back loops that you will do all the way down just go right up over top of the straggler to trap it under position and just do one single crochet in each of the back loops all the way across and I'll see at the end of this row. So I'm coming into the very last one. So you will see a little ridge. That's what makes it look like it's separate. I always thought, I thought it was a mile a minute uh, concept but it's that ridge that creates that look. 
Now you're gonna do rows two and three um, like you did before as we continue now and we are going to chain up three which counts as the first double and you're gonna double crochet in the next one. And then just going around that same post, double crochet. Skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next and you're gonna do that all the way down the end. So you already know what you're doing at this point. You just matter keeping the color sequence going and the color sequence is mentioned in the pattern if you'd like to exactly match it or you can just do this as a scrap kind of project. Use what you got and uh, etc. So you're just gonna go all the way to the end and then double crochet in the last one. I would also keep an eye making sure that these kind of match. So you see this? Just kind of use your fingers and follow it down and you can see it matches. Turn around, do the same thing that you just did. So chain up three counts as your first double and then you're going to double into the next and then wrap around the post and then skipping the next stitch, double crochet in the next and etc. and do all that all the way. This is uh, row number three and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up all the way to the end and I'm just gonna do a double crochet in the turning chain. So turn your work and do one more row of this color before switching it and it's just one single crochet, chain one and one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. So all you just need to do is keep repeating what you already know now. So the next time, let me just get to the end here. So how are we gonna start? So I would technically then finish off this color and then when you start the next one you're gonna do in the back loops only, single crochet in the back loops and go all the way across and then do your two rows of these fabulous stitches and then one single crochet across and then change your work. So you'll end up with another ridge and each time you have these color changes that will be uh, showing this ridge. So you're gonna keep doing that until you get to the length that you would like, the, the, the length of the particular project and then what we want to do is that we want to do a border. So when you're ready for the border, this is gonna be it. So we wanna fasten off. So the border is going to be existing on the edge here. So it's not top or bottom, it's actually the sides. And it looks like it's a mile a minute concept because it looks like it is like a, a strip that's been added to each other but it's the way that you do the border that makes it look finished. So what we have to do is just finish off this one, just weave in your ends and you, you will probably uh, want to use a tapestry needle in there so let's just quickly do that. So with the item facing right side up, we're gonna start with our first color and I'll show you how to change the colors as well. So you're gonna start off right in the corner. Okay, so if this was uh, another portion, you would start off here. So you wanna start off and just put it onto the hook and just scoop it through. You have two loops, pull through, that's a standing single crochet. So right here, the halfway point of a strip is where we wanna place. So you wanna chain one first and then you wanna treble. So wrap the hook and then going into there, pull through, pull through two, two, and two. And you wanna do that three times. So do it again, so chain one and then treble into the same one. Chain one and treble one more time. And then chain one and then just drop it to the last section of that same color. So you're technically done that one right there. So you wanna do the same on the other side. So you wanna finish this off. So you will need to do your tapestry needle work if you, if you must. I wouldn't necessarily just kind of weave it in loosely. I would actually use a tapestry needle because especially if this is for a child. So turn it around to the back side and just go back and forth a total of three times. And then one more time and then we'll start the next one. So you can see that if you decided to do a solid color border you would probably not have to do any of this as far as like fastening off all the time. But again, if you want exactly what you see, then that's the great, that's the way you should do it. So moving on to the next one here. Okay, so you choose the other color that you have. Start off with the 
standing single and start off in the same color of the of the color that you're working with. Scoop it and do a standing. Once the single crochet is in there then just chain one and then do your treble. So one then chain one do another one chain one and then another one chain one and then that's it. So then you'll come into the next one. So you will move all the way down your edging doing this and you will notice that it will be all rounded off. So just give it a good stretch. Uh, it'll all be rounded off in the edges when you go to work on it like that. You'll do the same for the other side. So if you don't didn't want to change your colors in between you could just continue along. So single crochet go to the next one single crochet and go. And I'm kind of lazy that way so I would consider doing that but that's completely up to you and the choice is yours. And when you're finished just weave in your ends and then you're good to go. Until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com.